Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. I'm Evan Massoud. Thanks for tuning in on DCTV, and welcome live to our viewers on YouTube for the live stream. Today, boys soccer once again. We were with you last Friday as the Indians hosted the Durfee Hilltoppers in a tie game. It ended in a tie. And uh, today we have the Brockton Boxers in town to square off against the home team, Dartmouth Indians. Should be a good one. Uh, Dartmouth comes in 1-0-1. Of course, that tie was against Durfee last time. Brockton 0-1-1. They lost to New Bedford and tied with Bridgewater Rainham. And a quick whistle here. Not even 15 seconds in. And that was really the story last game. Um... You know, everybody's still getting used to the new rules, which we have actually right up here in the booth now. So I searched high and low, could not find them last time, but now we have a reference point. So we'll keep an eye on the rules in case there's any questions. Uh, and that right there was a good example of, you know, what you can do. Number 13 there for Brockton, that was Derson Barros playing it off the chest. That is acceptable. Can't use the head, though. So only the chest, no headers, no throw-ins. You're going to see an indirect free kick from the side. And an indirect meaning you have to set it into play first. You can't just kick like a foul kick. You have to send it to a player and then, then you can kick it away. This here an example of what a regular free kick is. Dartmouth, this is David Rainville, the second. Oh, they did go indirect, actually, so my mistake there. That was it. That was indirect as well. Brockton in their road whites. Dartmouth in their home greens. We'll run down the starters for you as they play in midfield. For the boxers, in goal, number zero, Brandon Deleuz. Uh, Deleuz, excuse me. Number three, Marion Batista. Number five, Gennaro Reynoso. Number eight, Raul Rodriguez. Number six, Jeremias Rosa. Number nine, Jaden DePina. Number 12, Zachariah Foster. Number 13, Derson Barros. Number 17, Gratian Morera. Number 23, a sophomore and a captain as a sophomore, Isildur Fernandes. And I'll tell you, coach is really high on him. And then number 24, Helton Brandeo. And Herminio Furtado, the head coach for the boxers, back once again leading the team. And for the home team Indians, biggest story is that uh, Lucas Batista, who is the senior starting goalkeeper, he came out in the Durfee game last week, uh, actually on the goal that was allowed that tied the game, that Durfee tied the game with at the beginning of the third quarter. He uh, ended up with a bad cut, and he's got some stitches. He actually can't play today, so he is out. Uh, so they have the junior, Liam Fogarty, who filled in the second half, basically the entire second half, for Batista. Fogarty's in goal. Did a great job stepping up last week, and uh, he's getting the start today. So Fogarty, number one, the goalkeeper, followed by number two, Corey Mello, number three, Andre DaCosta, number seven, Charlie Fairfax, number eight, David Rainville, the second, number nine, J.P. Kearney, number 10, Matthew Furtado, number 11, Jacob Van Ziel, number 14, Miles DeBarros, and number 15, Luke Caniff, and last but not least, Number 24, Mark Good. And, of course, the head coach for the Indians is Josh Silva. Far side we go, and it's Good grabbing it for the Indians. Taken by Brandeo of the boxers, and now... Going out of play, trying to stop it was can if could not. And it'll be a kick in for the boxers. Again, indirect, set it to a player, and then they kick it on. This one coming across the field towards us, and it's chased down by Jalen Mendez, number 18. So already just uh, less than five minutes in, and uh, number 18 in there. Mendez, he did. He was not one of the starters, but Coach Furtado already making some changes. That one cleared out by Deleuze. 
a risky play using the foot and trying to kick it out because he had pressure coming from the Indians. And it was kind of a pop fly. It didn't go too far out of the box. Set across the field for Reynoso. Reynoso working his way through the defense. Lost it a couple times and was still able to keep it. Comes across this side to Rodericks. Rodericks with a nice spin move and now cut off by J.P. Kearney and we hear the whistle. Just an absolutely fantastic middle of October afternoon for soccer here in Dartmouth. 66 degrees. Rather warm for October 14th. And, uh, you know, basically all blue skies. Of course, you see the shadows. By halftime, the field will pretty much be all shadow. The sun will be gone. But uh, for now, they'll have, they'll have to play with the shadows creeping across. Subbing in is Nicholas Carvalho for the Indians. Takes the place of Charlie Fairfax. Goal kick coming from Fogarty. Lands just shy of the 40, across the 35. And DePina trying to center one. Brandeo saw a little bit of contact there, kind of a push off, and I think that's what the whistle was because it looks like Dartmouth's going to have the kick. Is Coach Silva on your screen as we get ready for the kick here. I do have to, you know, I do have to give the State Association, MIAA, some credit because in, in reading through, you know, they, they came out with guidelines and modifications to the rules for, of course, whatever sports we're playing. And, I mean, it's pretty clear cut, you know, on what can and cannot be done. You know, good bullet points, pretty clear and concise rules. I mean, they, 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 they really did their best, and, and they didn't rush it. I mean, we really didn't hear until early to mid-August, you know, really what was going to happen. So they did not necessarily just rush all of this stuff out. You know, they did take their time. As we're going to have a free kick from just outside the box here. Indirect, they send it towards the net. It's off the uprights and no good. Good attempt there from De Pina and Rosa. You know, a couple highlights here, and we did touch on this last time, but, you know, quoting specific language here. So rules within the game. It is a violation to intentionally head the ball. It results in an indirect free kick. It's a violation to place your hands on any part of the opposing team member's body. That also is an indirect free kick. We have an indirect corner kick, it appears. So again, even this, not a true corner kick. Set it in play, kick it back, then fire. And right into the hands of Fogarty it goes. Here's another one. It is a violation to intentionally make body contact with an opposing team member's body. This includes the shoulder-to-shoulder. -shoulder. Tackling which we kind of just saw right there, <laughs> backing them into or any other intentional contact. Backing into them, excuse me, or any other intentional contact. It results in an indirect free kick. It's also a violation to attempt to slide tackle. Another free kick. So persistent infringement of any of the above modified rules results in a yellow card. So, And that's different also from what we were told last week. So it's not that the infraction is an automatic yellow card, and that was the interpretation of one of the officials last week. Obviously, that's not necessarily accurate either. So it's persistent. So if you're habitually you know, going in and slide tackling someone, well, out comes a yellow card. I'd say it's three. To me, it'd be like three strikes, you're done. Um, so... You know, a couple of highlights there of what the MIAA had drawn up. There's also some information on restarts. You can find, if you're curious and you really want to read through it all, you can go to MIAA.net, and uh, everything's pretty much there. It's it's right on the homepage, easy to find. Um, 
but it's good to have something in print. Like I said, you know, I, I did search for this last week, and for whatever reason, it, it, I don't know if links were not working or what, but I could not find this for Friday. Found it pretty easily today, so perhaps they made some changes to their website. I'm not sure, but needless to say. Off the chest, settled, taken by Da Costa, and then quickly turned back around by De Pina as the boxers continue to really control the pace of play through this first 10 minutes here as tumbling down went Brandeo. It'll be another free kick for the boxers. They really have not had too many minutes down the other end of the field. The boxers have controlled play here for the most part. This one, full-on free kick, going down into the corner, trying to keep it in. Wow, well, that's a great job. Really good attempt to keep that one in bounds. I believe that was uh, Roderick's. It was, yeah, number eight for the boxers. And right there you saw Kearney. He was down there as well. And uh, Roderick, so, you know, he stopped it. I thought for a second it was actually going to stay in bounds. It took an extra roll. Jonah Correa into the game for Dartmouth. Uh, we just saw Jacob Van Ziel come out. Another whistle. I think this might be an offside. Dartmouth with the free kick. Furtado moving back towards the middle of the field. And no good there on the pass. So he was he was looking for Carvalho, I think, and Carvalho got behind the defender and the boxers were able to turn it around. And the Indians will send it in now, Kearney. Kearney sent it to Mello, who sent it right off the thigh of Reynoso. Taken down, there's another whistle, another free kick for the Indians. Matt Furtado there, number 10. Moving upfield. Kearney will kick again. Looking for help. DaCosta, and again, that one deflected as well. That one off of Brandeo, and it'll roll out. And we'll do it again. Cut off by Brandeo. And then he's cut off by Rainville. Sends it right up the field. Full sprint for the ball and clearing it out. That was Mendez. That was an opportunity there for Dartmouth. Just just a little out of reach. And that's one of the things that Coach Silva told me before the game here is that, uh, you know, again, we're only two games in, but he's got to do better at cashing in on any and all opportunities, especially, you know, again, given the, the rule changes and, and how the pace of play has completely been altered. So... You know, when you get those opportunities, they may be fewer and, you know, further between than, say, in past seasons. Got to make the most of them. Got to cash in. Um, and, and, you know, one of the things he actually mentioned was, you know, in, in losing uh, Batista last week, you know, it, w it was an interesting game because uh, on Friday against Durfee, you know, Dartmouth scored in, in the first four minutes. And it was a beautiful goal. I mean, textbook set up, you know, kick it down you know, to one side of the net, have it go almost behind the net, center the shot, and someone's waiting there just to, you know, to bury it. And uh, yeah, it, it was a very hockey-like setup. It was just spectacular. It was a great goal. You know, then Durfee, you know, playing from behind the whole first half, they didn't tie it up. They tie it up in the third, right at the start of the second half in, in actually it was, I think, less than three minutes, and it was a bouncer. It got over Batista, and that's when Batista had got his injury was during that goal when he was chasing down the ball that got past him, and it trickled in. That was the tying score, and that was basically the end of the story. But after that goal, you know, sometimes those kind of weird goals will, 
you know, will upset you as the opponent giving it up, you know, as the team giving up the goal. And he said he was very proud, Coach did, very proud of the team to, you know, they didn't stop competing, they didn't let it get them down, that it was, you know, kind of one of those, say, you know, soft goals, if you will. Um, no, nope, they kept competing. You know, they did well. Fogarty, again, he did well in the net, filling in for Batista. So, you know, Coach Silva liked what he saw, that's for sure. And they did. I thought the Indians did a good job. You know, they, they kind of flattened out a little bit in the third after that goal, but they, they came back pretty strong in the fourth. And actually, the fourth quarter was rather crazy on Friday. There were, you know, a number of cards were given out at that point. Tons of stoppages. There was some confusion. There were a lot of actual, you know, kind of hold your breath moments for both sides in terms of shots on goal. Some real close ones. So the fourth, I'd say, really was the most entertaining part of last Friday's game. But, you know, the two goals that, that occurred were very early in their in their respective halves. And, you know, for the most part, the rest of the way, it was, it was just, you know, steady play, steady soccer. Stolen by the Indians, and I'll tell you, Furtado's got some speed. He showed that a couple minutes ago. Full steam ahead, cut off, goes out of play along the sideline. So not a goal line inbounding here. It'll be uh, right on the sideline, very close to the corner, actually, maybe, what, 10, 10 yards or so up. Indirect kick, Fairfax. They lose it. And that's a whistle, and it's going to be Brockton ball. A little too much physicality there from Furtado that time as one of the boxers went down. Brockton will take it over. Brandeo. Ooh, he was trying to pass it through the legs. He was looking for uh, Reynoso, but the Indians able to keep it. Anderson, number 20, he loses it. And now it's kicked out of the side closest to us as Carvalho had gotten a foot on it as well. And there's Kearney going to set it in. Quick clear there from the boxers. And just like that, already back at midfield, much of the pack still behind everybody. Now the Indians defenders and midfielders getting down the field. There's a lot of open space though between the couple defenders for Dartmouth that were, you know, down this end. Off the shoulder. That one going out of play right in front of the far bleachers. And the Indians will kick it in again. Bit of a fake there. I'm not sure that they actually truly indirected that. I think it was a miss on the indirect. And so now it's going to be Brockton Ball. Blocked by Anderson. Same spot, really. We'll do it again. So we roll up on the two minutes. Pretty quick first quarter here. Again, that was another change that the... We're playing quarters here instead of full halves, which, I, if I'm being honest, I, I really don't like that. I, I think it... We were talking about it before the game. Our crew here and myself, we were, and it just really kind of, to me, it takes, kind of takes the steam out of the game. It's basically adding a free timeout, like a hydration break in a sense. Um, you know, two minute break between quarters. Gives them a chance to take their face coverings off, get some water, yeah, I mean, and sanitize. So, you know, I get it. I, again, I understand it, but for me that that just really there's enough stoppages that we're seeing because of you know infractions to the new rules to 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 break it up now into quarters as well you're further slowing you know the momentum of either side that that's just not something I'm really in favor of but again I understand why they're doing it I get it it is what it is you know 
At least we have soccer. <laughs> At least we have sports. Indians had a corner kick. That's a trip, and it goes out of bounds. I think yeah, the infraction came before the ball went out of play. This should be Dartmouth ball because of the infraction on Brockton Trump's anything else. It is going to be Dartmouth ball. Very little time left, about 60 seconds probably max. So the Indians looking for a late first quarter opportunity. They haven't been down this way too many times. They did touch the ball. Now they kick it. And, oh, the official almost got in the way of that one. Perhaps a little solar glare. Saw it at the last second. Out of play it goes. And the whistle blows. That's the end of the first quarter. So after 20 minutes, we're scoreless here. In Dartmouth, again, a uh, quick break for both sides. A water break, a take your mask off, get some fresh air type of a break. And then we'll be back at it. And they will switch sides, you know, just like we see in uh, basketball or football. They will switch sides here when they come back. So for now, just a quick break, and I think I'm going to do the same. Water break. We'll be right back. Stick with us. Live coverage on YouTube of boys high school soccer. Welcome back, everybody, to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Here we are. Scoreless game. Second quarter about to begin. Brockton versus Dartmouth Boys Varsity Soccer on DCTV. Live streaming right now on the web. So if you're watching on YouTube, hello there. Hope you're enjoying the game so far. It was a pretty quick 20 minutes in that first quarter. A lot of action. Uh, not a lot of shots on goal. Not a lot of chances. You know, just a lot of back and forth. Decent ball movement. Um, I, I will say that I think Dartmouth's got to do a little better job attacking. Uh, you know, Brockton, for the most part, up until really the last five minutes or so of this first quarter, Brockton really controlled the pace of play. So, you know, if Dartmouth wants opportunities, first thing they got to work on is, you know, getting the ball onto the offensive attack and, you know, trying to penetrate the Brockton defense. Look at how quick Brockton is to the ball. They, they're Anywhere the ball goes, you see a bunch of white jerseys. They've been pretty quick. It's not to say Dartmouth hasn't been, but Brockton has been a little bit more effective in, in their defense and moving the ball up to offense. So we'll see which side uh, makes any adjustments. We'll see if Dartmouth is able to kind of forge ahead a bit. Had a good... Good little huddle up there during the uh, break in between quarters. And I'm sure Coach Silva had some pointers, things that he was noticing. So, be a kick in for the boxers. Evan Massoud with you here again, second quarter to begin. No halves. We're doing quarters here for soccer. So, second quarter of the first half, and we are scoreless. That one going out of play on the far side. Coming down. Oh, getting by Mark Good was uh, Joe Rodericks.
Chance for Fogarty able to make the scoop. Some contact before the ball came down, and it'll be Brockton Ball. Looks like uh, Jacob Van Ziel getting the bad news. That one goes sailing over the far side, the bleachers. Actually went out, though, before midfield, if you can believe it. That's how far it really sailed. <laughs> so Brockton's going to inbound from way up at the 30. Turned around by Mike Van Ziel. Sent towards the box. It's cleared out by Deleuze. Out of play it goes. Free kick. Indirect. Waiting. Settling. Now lofting it. And I think we got an offside. So Mike Van Ziel break pretty quick. And it looked like he was ahead of the defender there. So, And that's where the free kick coming. So, or indirect, excuse me. Oh, a break. Here we go. Brandeo. To the net. Oh, it sails over the crossbar. Wide open net. And he couldn't cash in because he certainly had Fogarty beat. We remain scoreless. Let's take another look. I mean, this is as good a break as you can get Fogarty. And actually, he kind of kicked it right at Fogarty, knocked him down just a little too high. We saw a lot of those on Friday. Again, if you if you saw the game on Friday with us, there were a number of those as well that actually hit the crossbar, in fact. And um, again, those kind of like hold your breath moments. Like, is it is it low enough? Is it going to just get there? And then, no, it just, just barely denied. Well, a good chance there for the boxers, unable to strike first. Avery Reed and Nicholas Carvalho coming in. Fairfax making his way down. And Mike Van Ziel also coming out. Looks like Damian Anderson, number 20, going to be coming in shortly too as he's chatting with Coach Silva close to the check-in area. Brockton moving the ball ahead once again. Brandeo trying to get it, could not. Two on one for the Indians, but they're not going to get to the ball fast enough again. Deleuze clearing it out. Towards the sideline, and it'll trickle out of play. You see the fans standing on the sidewalk there, top of your screen. That's the town hall property that's not the stadium. Can't be in the stadium, but lined up along the fence. The spectators. 
Uh, it was agreed upon that there would be no fans for the fall stadium, but I understand certain schools are still doing it nonetheless. Dartmouth here sticking true to what was agreed upon. Boxers with a free kick. This is a pretty good spot for the kick. Again, indirect, kicking it back now to Fernandes. Mendes. Now played on the ground by Rainville. Oh, swing and a miss. Total swing and a miss. But there was also contact. So Rosa pleading his case. With a free kick for the Indians. Now I'll tell you I'll tell you one thing that's kind of been interesting to see is this there's been some trickery and some creativity with these indirect free kicks on how they wanna, you know, first set the ball into play and um, you know, as to you know, who touches it first. So it's kind of been interesting to see how every time it happens, it seems to be a little different. I guess it depends on the two players that are actually, you know, setting it in play. But it, it's it's kind of interesting to see. This time we have uh, Rainville and DaCosta. Furtado. And another whistle. This time Brockton getting the ball. Oh, excuse me. Dartmouth will have it. All you got to do is touch it. See, there you go. Going down to the corner, trying to set it up. Anderson will have to spin around. That's pressure behind him. Has a teammate there to help. That was Furtado. Two boxers were there as well, and it looks like this time Brockton will have the ball. Good idea to try to set something up down in the corner and then recenter it. Didn't work out his plan, though. Cross to Mendez. And that's Danilo Gonzalez, number 18. Uh, pardon me, number 21. 18 was Mendez. Mendez, 221. There he is in the middle of the field. Barboza as well. Everybody's getting involved here for Brockton. Now Marion Batiste. Baptiste. Towards the sidelines it goes. Kept in by Rodericks. And that's coming right towards us. <laughs> Off the bleachers it goes. Slowed by Barboza. Spins it around. Has the middle of the field here. Looking for an open man. He has him. That's uh, Vega. And before it goes out of play. Oh, Brandeo lost it there. Still up that part of the field, though. Boxers were able to control it a bit and not let it get too far past the 30. And out of play. Less than 10 minutes to play before the end of the half. Second quarter here past its halfway mark. Centering pass, and it is played still in bounds. The Indians got to clear it, and they will. Mark Good, full steam ahead, finding Reed down the sidelines. Oh, overshot it. 
Anderson couldn't slow himself up. If he had, he probably would have beaten Fernandes to the ball. He got on the wrong side of him and the ball trickled past. That's another good feed. Back to Reed, taken away. Down towards the goal and out of play. Nice little surge there from the Indians. That's kind of what we need. We haven't seen much of that through this first half of play. Deleuze will kick it away. Coming around, Barboza to Rodericks. Roderick loses it. That's a push, yeah, absolutely. Covert or not, you can't do that one. <laughs> That's not going to fly no matter what situation we're in. No pushes in the back. It's not football. Ooh, that almost went. Wow. <laughs> Rainville was not ready, I don't think, for that. That almost went out of play. Indians almost gave up the ball right where they were inbounding. Indians trying to push the ball up ahead. Again, kind of rubbing shoulder to shoulder there. As Anderson was trying to break free. Back towards the middle. Down into the corner it goes. And it trickles out on the goal line. Just over four minutes to play here in the second quarter. Still tied and really the only uh, true chance we saw was for Helton Brandeo of the boxers, number 24, when he had that breakaway about 10 minutes ago. That's been really about it. Been hard pressed for either side to you know, really get deep into the other team's zone. It'll be Baptiste. Setting it into play, kicking it back to Fernandes. Mendez across to Gonzalez. Caden Lopes up the field. Good, good pass. Again, a lot of contact. Oh. 
And out of play. As Coach Silva, you know, I asked him about, you know, some of the consistencies or inconsistencies or confusion with the new rules. And he said, uh, you know, he said the first game they played, it was really tightly officiated in terms of, like, contact everything, like any little thing. But then, you know, last week against Durfee, it was a little bit more, I don't want to say lax. I guess lenient would be a better term. Um in terms of, you know, again, you know, rubbing shoulder to shoulder and, and or elbow to elbow or whatever. And we're kind of seeing the same thing today, too. I mean, there's been, been whistles, that's for sure, but there's also been a fair amount of physicality, which, again, if, you, if you're going by the letter of the law, uh, technically is not supposed to be the case. But I, I think really what it's going to come down to is interpretation and, how the officials just want to call it. And it's going to be Brockton ball after the Indians had an indirect kick. And it was blown dead basically when the ball was released. And it's out of play. Now, something I just noticed, another thing we were talking pregame, Dan, one of our cameramen today, he was here with us Friday as well. It, he said, you know, how are the officials doing the whistles? And I said, because we noticed that it didn't seem like the same whistle, and I'm thinking, well, I, I don't know. I said, you know, they shouldn't be blowing a whistle. And I'm thinking, well, how can they blow a whistle? They're wearing a mask. They're not lowering the mask to blow a whistle every 5, 10 seconds. Well, I just, now we're seeing it close by, and I don't know if, if we have a stoppage, maybe we can see our official close by he has a whistle in his hand basically an air whistle it's like a horn like one of the air horns but it's actually a little orange whistle in his hand and that's actually how they're blowing the whistle they're just they're they're activating it you know the, it's a handheld whistle so pretty uh pretty cool because i wasn't even thinking that you know they can't obviously blow a whistle with a mask on there it is in his right hand so that's the whistle right there so good catch from our uh, our camera guy Dan because I did not I actually didn't pick up on that. I saw that they had something in their hands last week as the first half comes to an end scoreless but I I actually didn't realize that it was literally like a handheld device. Uh so pretty cool even the officials having to be a little innovative keeping the mask on and still finding a way to blast our favorite noise in soccer the dreaded whistle. All right, we'll we'll leave you with that. First half done. We're scoreless at Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Second half coming up next on DCTV. Live coverage will continue on YouTube. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody, to Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. Evan Masood with you on DCTV. Second half about to begin. It'll be Brockton setting the ball in play. We are scoreless. Both teams already with uh, one tie on the season. And uh, haven't seen, again, really many chances except for that guy right there, Helton Brandeo. Had a breakaway early in the second quarter. And that was it. Um, had a great opportunity and couldn't cash in on it. Other than that, it really has been a pretty even draw. Again, Brockton with some some advantage, I'd say, in terms of ball control and, and, and 
you know, kind of playing up in on the offensive attack. But Dartmouth came back late in the second quarter there, um, and they had a pretty good surge and a pretty decent time where they were down on the offensive attack and really forcing Brockton to play defense. So Dartmouth kind of, you know, evened it out a little bit. I'd still like to see a little more from the Indians, but you, know, you can see, you know, Brockton's got a bit of a size advantage as well. So that, you know, doesn't help you. Um, but, uh, you know, Dartmouth has the speed. Dartmouth is a fast team. And here's a chance for the Indians as, oh, big collision. The whistle was blown too before, like literally a split second before that collision happened. Both guys getting up with a bit of a limp, but seemed to be okay. That was crazy. That was violent, actually, is what it was. Lucky that nothing bad happened, though. I do see uh, Deleuze looks like need a. Yeah, the goalie, Deleuze, is, I think he's coming out. Actually, I'm gonna, I stand corrected. That's not Deleuze, that's Santos. Coach Furtado put uh, Zachary Santos in his first attempt here. And uh, he's got, yeah, bad limp. He's coming off and Deleuze is going back in, the starter. So not quite sure the thinking in terms of uh, subbing out one goalie for the next, especially when you're in the middle of a game. It's not like there's, you know, been any problems. But Deleuze was on the bench to start this third quarter, the first 60 seconds of it. And Santos, unfortunately for him, only getting 60 seconds, having to come out. He And he made the call himself. He knew something wasn't right, and he actually waved to the officials and said, I got to come out. So he's being tended to as well. That was, for Dartmouth, probably the best chance of the game, to be honest with you. Um, and had that ball been just like, I don't know, one mile an hour slower, might have been able to get the kick off. Both guys whiffed on the ball. They collided with themselves. Coming back to the corner. And out of play. That was fired right across the 50-yard line from Brandeo. And uh, <laughs> much stronger than it needed to be. It sailed into the bleachers on the far side. Back towards the circle. Kicked up ahead. Brockton with a chance. Nope. Cleared away by... That was uh, Caniff. Chance again now. The boxers, no, it's spoiled. Oh, still in play in front. Can he make the turn? He cannot. Cleared out by the Indians up front. It was uh, Reynoso, excuse me, uh, Barboza, who was trying to turn it around for a shot on net, and he ran into the defenders and wasn't able to do it. Towards the box, sent towards the net, and it is wide to the left.
A great chance. The Indians take the lead. Buried into the corner. Jacob Van Ziel. Almost a carbon copy of what we just saw a couple minutes ago, but this time had a little more ball control, and he beats Deleuze, burying it into the corner. 1-0 Dartmouth. Perfect pass up ahead. Played on side, settled, and Deleuze beat. Look at that. Talk, <laughs> literally burying it in the corner. Big time score early in the second half for the Indians. And as we all know, anytime you play with a lead, it doesn't matter how late you get that lead. When you play with the lead, things are always a little different for you. So big time score there for Dartmouth. They lead it one nothing. Anderson trying to get around, could not. Boxer's trying to get it out of the zone. Backpedaling is Rogansley Richard having to clear it as Deleuze. Big time kick. Played off the chest. And out of play it goes. Playing along that far sideline. And a whistle is sounded. Bunch of subs getting ready for Dartmouth. Four of them, in fact, on the sideline. You see Nicholas Carvalho. Now just three, in fact. So not four, just the three. That was close to a header. And a whistle. I think that was, did they get away with a header? I wonder if they did, because that ball bounced. That doesn't bounce off your chest. I mean, that ball came off with force. And it was pretty high up. I, that looked like a header to me. And both officials watching the ball pretty intently, so I doubt that it was. I mean, they would have blown the whistle for that, but... Free kick from the 20 for Fernandes towards the net, wide to the right. No good. Carvalho coming in for Dartmouth. We also see Jonah Correa coming back in as well as uh, starter Miles DeBarros. So three guys coming in for Coach Silva. Coming out is Anderson, Fairfax, and Jacob Van Ziel who just scored that goal. Now a free kick for the Indians from just outside their own box. Trainer just came in with the uh, John Deere, bottom of the screen. Actually off screen, I should say, but uh, on the sideline here. And uh, they are carting Santos, the goalkeeper that came in for Brockton to start the third here. He's being carted off. Trouble for the Indians as Fogarty came out and was on the ground. Got very lucky that Dartmouth didn't give up a goal. I just saw the um, cleat was off of Santos' foot and it was on ice, so I want to say it was an ankle injury and that was the limp. It wasn't necessarily a knee. It looked like the ankle injury. Here's Furtado. Indirect free kick. 
Already 10 minutes played here, or just about 10 minutes played in this third quarter to start the second half. Want to welcome you back. If you're uh, watching on YouTube on our live stream, we do apologize. Um, you know, YouTube, w one of the things that's been a challenge is, uh, you know, w so many people reverting to, I mean, we were doing it last year, so it's not necessarily new for us, but with so many people switching to live streaming um, to do virtual stuff, YouTube is and Google, they've been changing stuff weekly, and sometimes their algorithms are little funky so uh, we did we did get crashed a bit there for a moment but we welcome you back we do apologize for the break um, Indians did score unfortunately during that little blackout so you know, we'll show a replay of that goal uh, momentarily now that you're back we'll, we'll cue that up on the next stop and uh, it was a sweet goal too from uh, Jacob Van Zeel to put the Indians ahead that one out of play and we'll have a goal kick Coming across the circle, it goes. Stopped by Mendez. Redirected quickly as uh, Carvalho was trying for it. And look at that. It goes all the way down into the corner and out of play. And that's where Dartmouth will have it. Big time clearing from uh, the boxers to get it all the way down. And nobody was there, so it just kept rolling. J.P. Kearney will inbound. Back up the sideline, it goes. A lot of contact there between Rodericks and Furtado fighting for the ball. Going across the field side to side, trying to spread it out a bit. Corey Mello coming in, sticking the foot out to block it from Brandeo, who is... Ready to try to strike again. That is sent right to him. Played off the chest. Can't control it. Comes back and a whistle is sounded. Looks like Brockton's going to have it. Pretty good spot as well. Anytime you're inside the 20, I mean, it's a real good spot to kick from. So Brockton ball. Your coach Silva coaching from the sideline here. Set in play. Free kick is on the way, and it is no good from Joseph Vega, number 22. Too high and too far to the right. And once again, Kearney kicking it off. Lofted back from Fernandes, all the way back down toward the box. Brandeo giving chase, along with Luke Caniff. Some shoulder bumping, that'll draw a whistle. Caniff know it. He knows it. And that was on a foul, so this is a straight-up free kick, and it'll be uh, Vega once again. This one low-lying, didn't really get much elevation on it. And the Indians cleared it out for a second. Brockton still posing a threat. Pirouetting and going down on his own power on the far side. One of the boxers, now the Indians push it all the way down the other side of the field. Pretty wild sequence right there. A lot going on in a short amount of time in a small area. Everyone fighting for position. And, and you know, too, one thing, you know, since Dartmouth scored, Brockton's got a little more physical as well here. It seems like there's a little bit more aggression from the boxers. More subs for the Indians. The Van Zeel brothers coming in as well as Anderson. Here 
Correct, guys. Correct, correct, correct. Correct. Hey, Hooking kick went right towards the middle of the field. Brandeo surging down the sideline. Body checked by Mello. They both go tumbling down. It stopped him in his track, but to me, that should be a foul on Mello. And a yellow card. There's our first. It's only a matter of time. And that means he's got to come out as well. So coming in for him is Rainville. Free kick from basically the corner of the box, just inside the 10. On the ground, deflected, and it'll be picked up by Fogarty. Actually pretty uh, uneventful. <laughs> Rolling, rolling all the way out to the side, right along the bench and pretty close to the truck, actually. Just under four minutes to play in the third quarter here, and there is a yeah, head to the hands. All right, the Indians scored while we were blacked out on YouTube. Again, we apologize for that, but take a look at this sweet goal. This is why we're Dartmouth is up one nothing. Van Zeel got in front and buried it in the corner, much to the to the delight of the fans that are lining the sidewalk just outside the gated stadium. And now our second yellow card. J.P. Kearney picking it up. But uh, really, that was a sweet goal from Van Ziel. Got a good feed from the back. Played it on side. So that's why we are one nothing here in the third. That one came <clears throat> about 10 minutes of game time ago. Maybe, actually, I think it was around the five-minute mark of the third. So, like, with about 15 minutes to play. So it was during, unfortunately, again, that blackout. But we do welcome you back. Thanks for coming back to us. And uh, we do apologize for that break in coverage on the live stream. Of course, if you want to see it in real time, this will be replayed on DCTV. As we, you know, we're recording as well, backup. So there was no, no blackout on the, on the record part here, just, just on the stream. You can blame YouTube. <laughs> So we're going to get a redo here. And it's going to be Vega trying to send it. And it's off the crossbar of the goalpost for football. And no good. Clock has stopped at the two minutes. So this is any stoppage time that we have before we switch sides for the final time for the fourth quarter or the second half of the second half, dare I say. <laughs> That's some alliteration for you. <laughs> Barros. Can't get around Van Ziel. Now they send one toward the box. Bounces once. Looks like it might have gone off the foot of Rodericks before going out of play. It's Dartmouth's ball. Rodericks is like, where's the call? And there's the elongated whistle. That means we're done with three. But Dartmouth breaks the ice early in this second half. 
They have themselves a lead and they continue to hold it. one nothing Indians after 60 minutes of play. Two minute break here in between quarters. Again, players will get to you know, distance themselves and demask, get some fresh air, take a water break before we switch sides and play the final 20. So see if the Indians can hold their lead and pick up win number two on the season. This would be a big one. You know, Brockton comes in 0-1-1, so they haven't won a game. And uh, this game, you know, because again, we're kind of in this little bubble, if you will. Um, six teams, the five Southeast Conference teams plus West Bridgewater, who didn't have a conference because the Mayflower Conference isn't playing, but they decided to play. So they're joining us, uh, West Bridgewater Wildcats, that is. So six teams only playing each other, and... That's it. So, um, you know, for Brockton, if they, if they end up losing this one, they go 0-2-1. That's that's kind of a tough place, and that's kind of rare for Brockton to kind of be in that situation. Coach Furtado did say been a little bit of a rough start. It is a younger team. They're kind of rebuilding a little bit. He said so, and, it, and it's, it's more challenging, too, because they're rebuilding with uh, new rules, of course, too. So you don't have, you know, the same rules that you've been playing with your whole life. Then you come into high school, varsity level, High pace, you know, high intensity, and then you're also having to kind of recreate how you coach and how you play the game. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. It's about adapting. We talked about it on Friday. It's going to be about who can adapt the quickest to changing times, changing situations. Games change all the time, and you have to adapt. Well, now you have a different aspect of adapting as well. So it's it's twofold. This is you know, it's a lot. And you know, Brockton, don't worry. I mean, they'll be there at the end of the season. I'm sure. Um, when we get to playoffs, there will be playoffs. I, I don't want to get too far ahead here, but just in case you're wondering, for those again who may not know everything that's going on, but basically there will be playoffs, but it's only going to be these six teams. It's going to be basically just a sudden death elimination style bracket with just these six teams in this grouping of play. Here's that goal one more time. The lone score of the game as Van Ziel beats Deleuze. We do hope that um, Zachary Santos, again, who was in the game just before that and then had that collision, we do hope he's okay. He um, he was carted off the field. It looked like an ankle injury because they had ice around his foot and the cleat was off, but now there's an ambulance in the town hall parking lot and he's getting off the, um, the John Deere with our trainer. So looks like he's going to end up having to go, I guess, I'm assuming for some x-rays or something. So uh, that's you know bad news for for Brockton. It does appear though that the ambulance is for Santos, the uh, backup goalkeeper for, or the second goalkeeper I should say, not necessarily a backup, but the second goalkeeper. Yeah, that's that's Santos on the stretcher. So he's he's he, they're carting him to the ambulance, and going to have to obviously get more medical attention on his on his foot. So that's a real tough break. We wish him the best. You know, you never like to see any injuries, especially anything severe enough where they get a call, you know, EMTs, but unfortunately injuries are part of sports and sometimes they rear their uh, ugly heads. So we wish uh, Santos the best and the boxers, you know, hopefully they'll get some answers on their teammates soon because I'm sure they're thinking about them too. All right, fourth quarter has begun. Evan Massoud with you on DC TV. Hope you're enjoying the game so far. Been very entertaining. I, I'd say this has been a little bit more entertaining than than Friday's game. I don't know. It seems like there's been a little more action, at least for me, a little more evenly split the action. Brockton's going to have a corner kick here. But again, I think it's indirect, given that Mendez is coming up. Yep, it is indirect. So, And that one trickles out of the box. Coming back down. Full steam ahead, Van Ziel. Pulls up. One versus two. Can he get through? No. Right on the sideline. And it is going to be Dartmouth ball. Caniff will kick it in. Back to DaCosta. Brandeo was right there, but DaCosta clears it. Big time, quick clear. It got all the way across the field, and Van Ziel was there. Kind of fighting with Rodericks for the ball, and now it's cleared back towards mid.
A chance now for the boxers. Oh, a collision. Another rather ugly collision, in fact. Yellow card handed out. And that card is on the sophomore captain, Fernandes. Oh, Feliciano Silva coming in to replace him. Free kick for the Indians. Again, from a good spot. Anytime you're inside the 20. Boxers putting up a wall of players now technically they're not supposed to yeah you go, I see the official coming in they're not supposed to be within arm's length that's six feet and they're right on top of each other so here we go chance for the Indians to try to go up to nothing on the ground, and it is good! Oh, it got by Deleuze on the ground. I don't know how he didn't stop it. It wasn't hit all that hard. But nonetheless, the Indians take a 2-0 lead here in the fourth on the free kick. Perfect placement. We'll see this one again. Let's see which way Deleuze breaks. Top left of the screen. He broke the right direction. He just didn't fall fast enough. The ball didn't, again, it didn't have too much steam off the foot, really. I mean, it wasn't the hardest hit ball we've seen, but good enough, I guess, right? 2 nothing Indians, 17 minutes to play. Another free kick coming for Dartmouth. <clears throat> Towards the net it goes, and it's cleared away. And out of bounds. Another collision. Man, oh, man. Barros for Brockton and Rainville for Dartmouth. Rainville still on the ground. Hooking. And it's going to go all the way to the far sideline and out of play. And now the Indians will get to inbound. But first, coming in, Nicholas Carvalho, substitute for Rainville. Every Brockton player in the vicinity signaling handball 
And it appears that that was the case. So now Brockton with the free kick. Got to make something happen soon. Really only one or two good chances, I would say, for, for Brockton. It hasn't just been, you know, some games you see where it's like, you know, shot on net, shot on net, shot on net, and then you get nothing to show for it. And then, you know, today, you know, for Dartmouth, the, the free kick and then the, the goal up front, I mean, but really you look at it and I'd say in the field of play, Dartmouth's had maybe three solid chances for a goal. Um, and it's it's just, it's weird how sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. I, I can recall one season uh, covering girls' soccer in Fall River, uh, covering Durfee, and it's it's incredible where they just, they had every game easily 10, maybe 12 shots on net, and that's probably conservative, but, I mean, like, legit, full-on, like, breakaways even, and then they couldn't cash in, and then they lose the game one nothing. I mean, and it was just, it was the same thing every game. Now, and then you have a situation today where, you know, the chances have been there, but the real close, like, coulda, woulda, shoulda type goals, you know, there were a few, and that's it. Just a handful between the two teams. But Dartmouth's up 2 nothing, So, you know, go figure. Every game's different, and it's just kind of how the, how the cards fall sometimes. Sometimes you can do everything right, and you still come out on the short end of the stick. Ball is in play. Furtado comes in to grab it. Taken away by Barrows, who's working his way up the sideline, finds Brandeo, and here we go. <laughs> Look at the speed from Brandeo, but can he get it stopped? Great centering pass, but cleared out by the Indians. Great job from Dartmouth. Kearney was up there, and then it was cleared out and sent all the way down the sideline. Great save there from Fogarty. Looks like another card was given here as we see Vega out of the game. And our official there taking notes. And this is kind of like what we saw on Friday as well, that the card started showing in the fourth. So officials kind of letting stuff go through, you know, two to three quarters and then kind of cracking down a bit in the fourth quarter. I'm not quite sure, you know, what, Again, what constitutes it versus what doesn't constitute getting one because it's clear that, you know, these players are, are, are playing rather physical and, and very, very similar to what we would see any other time, you know. So I'm not sure exactly what the officials are looking for, but there must be some key factors and things that, they, that they're really just focusing on and that's it and not necessarily every single strict violation that you know or strict rule that has been handed down and as we go under 10 minutes here in the game we finally have a field with no shadows no no light it's actually all shadow so no difficulty seeing on either side no advantage from playing on one side or the other basically all all shadow as the sun is set behind Slocum Road. Lights are on. 
Well, that's pretty cool. You know, when you get LED lights, you hit the switch, and they're just on. There's no warm-up. Wow, what a great chance for Brockton. But Brandale, I don't know if he wasn't ready for it, but he had wide open goal on the left side there. All he had to do was stick the foot out. So we'll call that one a missed opportunity for Brockton because that, that should have been that should have made it two to one, I, I would say. That was a great set for Mendez down in the corner. Free kick. Baptiste he has Mendez to his right. I would assume he's going to send it towards him. And he does. Mendez kicks it off. Floater. And it goes out of play. And while they set this play, I'll let you know what's up for these teams, what's next on their schedule. All right, next game is Friday. Brockton will be at West Bridgewater. So Brockton's got another road game. On Friday the 16th. And Dartmouth will be next door at New Bedford, just down the road. Another free kick. Here we go. As the clock continues to roll here, six and a half to play. Oh, here we go. A break for the Indians. Oh, and he lost his balance. Mike Van Zeel had nothing but open turf in front of him. And he just lost his footing. That one through the uprights. And I hope the tree stops it from hitting my car. <laughs> it's rolling right towards my tire and underneath. Get it out. Well, that would have been a cool field goal. That ball had a lot on it, but unfortunately those uprights are just there for show. <laughs> And uh, Brandeo got to bring it down a little bit to have it count. Rainville up the sideline to Jake Van Zeel. And Jake is pushed down. A lot of contact there. And, that, and I'm surprised that didn't call for a whistle. We've seen whistles for much less today. Very surprising. Because, I mean, <laughs> Van Ziel fell to his left. The opponent was to his right. It's not like he had someone to lean on. He got pushed the other direction. So an interesting no call there. Good stop from Mello. DaCosta 
stops it, and now Anderson going after it. Able to get around the defender, and we hear a whistle. Hey, that that's a killer right there because yeah I know technically right we're not supposed to, no contact the, to me that should have been clean and, and Anderson is going right around him but instead you know the 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 wind in the sail goes away with the whistle and then play gets stopped and you get to kick it kick it from the spot of the the infraction the violation I, I would have been nice to see that play continue on toward the box. Time running out for the boxers. Just over three minutes to play, and Dartmouth's doing a good job of uh, keep away. Ooh, Anderson might have taken an elbow to the face. See, he, he got basically, like, flatlined. He went backwards and down. And a yellow card, and... That'll most likely be the day for Feliciano Silva, who came in to replace one of his teammates who had also gotten a card. Towards the net, off the uprights, and no good. Take a look at that yellow card. Let's see what happened to uh Yeah, a little contact from uh from Silver right there. I was gonna say there was a might have sold no offense, but might have sold it a little bit too. I'm not saying this is, you know, Montreal Canadians, no. But I'm just saying that, you know. The elbow looked, at least on the close-up replay, the elbow didn't look as close to the face as I thought it was in real time. But nonetheless, and here we are. Two minutes. Clock has stopped, and the Indians look to just kind of run it out here. Let's see. Try to pick up win number two of the season. Looking pretty good. This would be a big win against Brockton, that's for sure. Young team or not, Brockton always comes tough to play. Oh, here we go. A chance. Oh, Deleuze able to make the stop. Anderson had a chance. That one back out of play as well. Fairfax will inbound. Gets it to Carvalho. That one coming towards the bench and the bleachers. And that's the game. The Indians win it with two second half goals and grab their second victory of 2020. They're 2-0-1. Two, oh, Brockton picks up loss number two. 0-2-1 oh, two, is the boxer's record with this one going final. Big win for the home team. So two wins, no losses, and a tie. Not too bad after three games, especially when you consider that Dartmouth is the Lowest division team in this Southeast Conference. Again, you know, n not counting West Bridgewater because they're an add-on this year. But you know, when you go strictly on divisions and stuff, you know, Dartmouth is, is the only D2 team. So they just came in, and they took care of Brockton with the shutout. 2-0, the final score. Great game this afternoon, really. 
fun game to watch. Again, a lot of, uh, I'd say a lot more physicality than I would have expected to see, but it does make for a good viewing experience, that's for sure. And uh, very entertaining ball game. So we hope that you enjoyed it as well. If you want to see a replay of it, of course, it'll be running on DCTV this week. For our great crew behind the scenes, thanks for tuning in for more high school sports coverage. Enjoy the middle part of the season. I'll be seeing you towards the end of it for uh, another match. I believe I'm on tap for girls soccer towards the end of the month. So until next time, Evan Mastard saying so long from Dartmouth Memorial Stadium. <laughs>